everyone. Uh, good evening. I think my sound is really high, so really thank you. We are here to our talk, which is focus on the retailers as a new fashion sustainability. This is a four and last talk, and as you know, we already introduce, thanks to our partner, Giusy Bettoni, CEO of CLASS, the innovation and responsibility, the finance, and also manufacturing with other, other partner, Dilon, Loreto Di Rienzo. And today we close with the topic of retailers. Uh, we assume that retailers are taking a key role in defining the guidelines on the issue of sustainability. And this is a very important topic. And consumers all over the world, they are dictating their interest in sustainability. So during this talk, uh, we have three super guests that they are coming from different countries, actually, because we have one from Italy, Alessandra Guffanti. We have Cristiano Gellera uh, from uh, Lugano. And we have Emma Warner Brown from Munich, German. And then, of course, Juicy is in presence. This is a digital talk, OK? <laughs> That's the point. And we will ask them their opinion in relation in which are the terminologies, the consumer language, and what it's more effective for them to understand when we talk about sustainability, because we totally agree that there is a, a massive push pushing from the consumer to invest in sustainability and be more sustainable in term and be more responsible. And we assume the retailers are working in this direction. So let me introduce you my survey. And I start immediately with my survey that I did talking one by one in a few countries all over the world with the buyers and retailers where I'm relating almost every day. So calling, talking, WhatsApping, and using Line, WeChat, and whatever I could to tackle them and ask them. Let me see. I in Europe and in all the country, I highlighted some keywords that could be the terminology that I seen that consumers are requesting more inside of the store. So in Europe, we have brand strength, brand value, and beyond brand value and brand strength, of course, we have the authenticity and the trustability. So what brands say has to be real, authentic, pre-loved, and this will be one of the topics that we will touch. And also honesty and transparency. So these are really elements that consumers understand much better when they find the keywords that explain the brands. Let me see also United States, always from the consumer sentiment, we have innovation from tradition. And of course, let me remind you that the survey target is the high target. We are talking about high level of brands, high level of multi-brand store. And innovation from tradition is really related to make a real, well-made product. Everything trace it. Social environmental commitment is a very important element. Even inclusivity maybe is the most important topic in terms of brand investment, in terms of retailers' investment, even in this case. Use tech to reduce waste. Technology that has to be used to reduce the waste. And then we have another element, which is the influence of walk. Walk, it's really a movement that is growing and drawing, starting from a Twitter. The walk means to awake the people that care about human being, uh, social uh, facts, uh, take more care about the people that need it. It's an evolution of inclusion, and it's really one of the most important aspects. And of course, circular economy, circular, circular economy ever. 
Then we have Korea. Korea is at first innovative materials. Innovation, of course, innovative in terms of responsibility, but this is innovation rather than sustainability. Push for progress. Everything is progress for them is the top. It's really a mandatory aspect. Zero waste and slow consumption, which is another great movement. Most of the buyer told me consumers are spending less. In this case, they want to just buy what they can use for a long lasting time. And this is another fact. They prefer don't spend so much money for fun things, but mostly to have something which is one pieces, that's it. And we will see that long lasting for them will be expanded in the upcycling concept and the pre-love concept. Then let's see Japan. I, I like it to put a survey outline that I ask it to uh, find one of my, of my girls in Japan. And we see that she did this survey outline going to the objective to understanding the higher level of consumer in Japan. And we can see that the main topic for them is we are acting to reduce the amount of garbage and waste. This is really the direction. But talking about fashion, long lasting, prestige, quality, these are the two elements more important. And please listen, prestige. Prestige is a new word, it's coming in, rather than use luxury. Trustability, authenticity, and again, less but better. Spending less means I buy one piece that can cost a little bit more, but I can resell. It's another important topic. And then we have, we have also China. And for China, I like it to take the homepage of one of the most interesting department store, which is K11. K11 has a huge, a massive expansion in the later year from Hong Kong to Shanghai, Chengdu, and Guangzhou. And they are focused in art, people, nature, the three main elements. Art and creativity means genuine product. And for them, it's related to sustainability. Local heritage is another element to sustain the local and domestic business. Luxury pre-loved. Embracing frugality. This is a new wave that they incorporated in the mindset of their consumer. And of course, this simply life that can feel to be a little bit strange, but simply life for them, it's going back to their roots. And this is a massive message from the government connected to sustainability. So I don't want to take so much because I really want to open the talk with my guest. And I want to, let me say, start with a provocation with Cristiano. Let me introduce Cristiano Gellera, which actually we never met in physical. So, and I have to thank another speaker that we have today that was connected from Los Angeles. And we have the opportunity to talk together and to discover the luxury business in circular economy, because Cristiano is a consultant in this direction. But I would like that Cristiano can come on the stage and introduce this topic. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for the, the introduction. Um, just uh, let me say a few words about this topic. Uh, I guess that's a um, five minutes, eight minutes, no more. I don't steal more than five minutes than your, that's your time, of your time. So let me say the pre-owned or pre-loved uh, market is uh, a counter-cyclical market, because what I mean, if the economy is good, that's good. 
If the economy is bad, that's okay in any case. So based on top consulting firm analysis, the proportion of uh, second-hand or pre-loved uh, pieces in closets is predicted to grow from 21, I mean this year, to 27 in 2023, with the value of the sector that is estimated to be worth over 16 billion by 2025, so the huge amount. The goal of the big brands uh, today is not only economic, uh, it's very important, but also to collect data, understand which product is interesting, after how long it is uh, resold, and at what price, and so on. So many, many information. So we have not just an interest in economic, that it, that's the first interest, of course, but not only. To get all this information uh, uh, and to get under control this new market, let me call it new market, uh, last three groups companies are alliancing with a new kind of retailers. Considering that luxury groups have traditionally uh, been worried about second-hand seller or pre-loved sellers, which weaken their control over distribution and pricing uh, of, of uh, their brands, and according to the critics, uh, uh, can help spread counterfeit goods. Okay, so let's talk about. Uh, these new retailers, let's call new retailers. Just to give you an example, Caring Star brand, I mean Gucci, last year announced a partnership with the United States-based resale platform, the Real Real, um, also listed at the stock exchange in at Nasdaq market. Well known, the Real Real, well known as the Instagram of pre-owned or pre-loved. The inner rent uh, longevity of luxury products support a circular economy, and by joining forces with the real real, Gucci is promoting, uh, let me say, the avenue to extend the life of its products even further. To date, uh, consignment of women's and men Gucci clothing on the real real has uh, uh, saved uh, more or less uh, 230 metric tons uh, of carbon and more than 10 million liter of, liters of water. So, huge amount, okay? As compared to the environmental cost of manufacturing those items for the first time, okay? So, let me see, we save the planet a little bit. But Gucci is just an example, uh, and today many luxury brands are joining the real, real, or considering other platforms as well-known Depop, Stocks, Goat. So there are several, let me say, platforms, and maybe that uh, you in front of me know very well, well better than me, all these names. But uh, which are the new services? Uh, and this is my focus, let me say, which are the new services required from luxury goods or the new retailers platform? Two verbs, refurbish and dismantle. Okay, refurbish and dismantle. Refurbish, use the items such as shoes or bags. I'll give you just an example related to Louis Vuitton for which I work. Uh, just in the United States, the number of the requests of refurbished has increased by more than, by more than uh, 200% in one year, just one year, and I'm talking just about the United States. Uh, so, but don't think that the final price uh, of a refurbished bag, uh, if we talk about Louis Vuitton or another uh, luxury brand, is much lower than a new bag, okay? We are talking about a difference between 15 or 20, at max 20% less. So the final price is similar because the refurnish, uh, to refurnish a bag need, let me say, uh, a lot of direct work, what uh, we call uh, in Italy artigianato, I mean, handcraft. So it's not a question of spending less. Uh, saving the environment also, let me say, as a cost. Uh, on one other hand, uh, try to think how much 
a car, let me say just an example, uh, I have a colleague from Germany, a Porsche car costs, a, a vintage Porsche car costs, and how much a new Porsche costs. In the future, there are similar the price, okay? So in the future, I guess that we will do the, make the same, uh, the same comparison between preload and new. I mean, any kind of items. The other verb, dismantle, this is a such new, also for me, uh, it's just one here that I'm working on, 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 this, uh, on this topic, on this verb, dismantle. Dismantle and the stock, the new unsold, the new unsold objects, bags, shoes, whatever you want, okay? Typically, these uh, items, luxury brands, can have a stock of, uh, of um, let me say, of spare parts, uh, mm, just to give you an example, if I have to repair a bag that uh, some customer brought to me in, in the shop, we be done just to give you an, the same brand, okay? I need the spare parts to repair the bag, the customer bag, otherwise it's a problem, okay? So this mantle can help to have, a, let me say, to have a stock and what does it mean? To increase your service level versus the final customer. Even if you bring a bag after 50 years, I have ensured to you that I can repair the bag, okay? I'm talking about luxury brands, obviously. So, um, or with the components, with the components, sorry, when I, I dismantle, example, the bag, <clears throat> the designer can decide, this could be the example of Gucci, the design can decide whether to create new lines or new products. So in this case, we are talking about uh, to increase the first row of uh, the first row or the profit and loss. So uh, as Orietta said, uh, new uh, terms, new verbs. My new verbs or terms are refurnish and dismantle. And that's all by my side. Thank you. Thank you, Cristiano. Thank you, Cristiano, because it was really clear. And I like it that you already suggested a two new term because dismantle and refurbish. Uh, I guess this means that the new product has to be with the highest quality of materials that could be textile, leather, uh, manufacture. So we, we need to keep this in consideration. So the highest quality gave the opportunity to go in this two direction. Great. Now, let me give the floor to Alessandra Guffanti owner of a Gufanti showroom and also past president of the Italian uh, entrepreneur organization on the young direction of Sistema Moda Italia. So let me, oops, go here. I'm sorry, I decided to switch like this because I would like to jump inside of the B2B now because Alessandra can speak in on behalf of a showroom. Alessandra, please open your microphone. Okay, so hi to everybody. First of all, thanks, Orietta, for this uh, invitation, which I totally appreciate. And hello to the other partners of this uh, conversation. So I'm Anne Cristiano. Um, so Gufanti Showroom exists since 1989. Our headquarters is in the city center of Milano. But actually, we have developed six other offices around Italy, so Roma, Napoli, Bari, Palermo, and Padova. From Milano headquarters, we cover, of course, all the Italian market connected to the other offices, but obviously also all our international customers. Mainly, we have a team of 10 mother tongue, mother tongue Russian uh, salesperson dedicated to this area, which is very relevant inside the Milanese um, fashion system, let's say. So coming to your question, Orietta, I'm really pleased to give uh, a reply to this one, as I can observe uh, the evolution of the retailers uh, on uh, four different segments. One segment is the women, which we carry very strongly. A second segment is the kids wear, where we have uh, a, a big market share in, as distributor. And we have a small observer, let's say, in men's and wedding dresses. Um, I wish to start uh, from the kids line. I have to say that uh, I'm happy to have in my portfolio some brands. One of these one is called North Sale, 
which uh, totally changed uh, their uh, collection uh, portfolio. It means that when we started three years ago, the collection was a classic uh, uh, standard, let's say, collection in the mood of the, in the DNA of the brand. And in three years, uh, they gained to make 92% of the collection of organic and uh, recycled fabrics. But that's not the only one. Others of the brands I cooperate really started either to make uh, down, and, sorry, lining of uh, the winterish items uh, with recycled uh, materials uh, or selected uh, fabrics uh, with specific capacities, uh, not only related to organic, but also to ecotex or biodegradability of the prints on them on and other uh, qualities. How did the children's uh, um, sector react? Of course, we can imagine mothers are very attentive to make a good buying for the kids. But on the other side, they are also very attentive to have the right price and the right product proposal on time, like back to school topics or ceremonies, which have to follow really a very precise calendar. And um, I have noticed mostly from those uh, uh, retailers who are totally digital, but also from others uh, who are 50 digital and 50 physical, that uh, the request of presenting uh, brands which have a, a strong and true, and I underline true by saying that it has to be a, full um, a fulfillment on 360 level or uh, towards sustainability, makes sense inside the brand portfolio proposal. So I can say that on the kids segment, which I observe uh, not only as being part of um, uh, a showroom, but also part of the children's committee inside Piti Bimbo, uh, is uh, reacting fast, let's say, to this uh, proposal. Women, uh, so women and men, so adults, uh, is more complex. Why? Because actually the stores, uh, they are related, they are, well, of course, we are in an after COVID moment. Uh, and uh, so we are still defining what to buy and in which stage. Uh, and um, several stores are still related to their classic uh, brand mix, uh, which they have in store. On the other side, uh, like on the other side of the river, let's say, we can observe that online, the request uh, of the buyers uh, to select products which have sustainable uh, qualities, depending on different aspects, uh, it can be from the fabric, from the manufacture, from the social aspect, uh, keeps on being uh, uh, an upscaling demand. So I feel that the women, uh, which is a sector which I have a look better than the men's, uh, uh, is uh, more slower, but moving, so it's an action ongoing, to have a look at products which uh, not only are sustainable as a generic uh, wording, but really fit to a characteristic which for several retailers is very important, authenticity. So the fact that the product they propose inside the stores comes from a brand where the designer has a very strong knowledge about what he's doing and the selection of the fabrics and the manufacture activity fits to his uh, style but with uh, the attention towards the sustainability this is the key where it's turning face step by step so um, i can say that uh, it's a mag i would i would use this word it's a magmatic movement uh, it means that uh, uh, it's not quick, but it's very strong and towards ongoing. We always have to remember, but uh, Ariette, I know that you put this point on topic always on your thoughts, that um, it's not only a matter about being efficient from a sustainable point of view. It's a matter to combine identity, beauty, and sustainability together in the product proposal. So definitely it's... Uh, uh, how can I say, a conversation on both sides uh, from the brand uh, owners and also from the resellers to, um, to catch it. Last point, uh, I can definitely say that those which have an online activity which is more, uh, 
stronger and which has uh, um, is, gives gives to this retailer a more engaged relation with the consumer are uh, definitely those more attentive to this topic as uh, it's a matter not only about the product they sell but about the capacity of the store to be attentive to a topic which is uh, in the first position of each conversation so it's actual it's necessary and uh, it can't be avoided inside the consideration of the f uh, store of the future. So from this point of view, just giving a final version, I can say that there is a development. Last point, uh, I work with different geographical areas and obviously not every area is at the same stage as a consciousness from the consumers and the retailers towards this topic. Um, there is a lot of uh, superficial activity from some aspects, but on the other side, uh, we still have to consider that consumers, uh, I mean, are uploading a lot of information in the last uh, 24 months about sustainability in fashion, although the industry is already since 10 years acting towards this topic. So uh, I had a very interesting demonstration coming from Russia. We, I, I can say that Russia is not a country which is active on sustainability in textile today or in general on sustainability. We know it from more from a political point of view, but we know fashion doesn't have uh, limits. And of course, the, top, the buyers of the top re retailers inside the Russian markets, while they buy the luxury goods they are used to buy regularly since a lot of years, uh, uh, are constantly being informed about this new um, attention of the brands towards sustainability in terms of uh, fabrics, materials, and so on. So this, uh, it's really entering their mindset. And I'm pleased to say that just before the summer, I got a request from an extremely big uh, group in Russia of luxury, who is, was willing to create a full line just for themselves uh, only all uh, in organic or recycled fabrics because they were really willing to be the leaders and the front row of this movement inside the country. So, as I said, magmatic means that uh, it doesn't stop. It's very strong. It takes its time. So it's really upfront ongoing. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. And thank you also because you gave to us uh, a view about Russia, because Russia is another topic country that for us it's really important. And now let me jump to Emma Warner Brown, because I now want to go not only in German, but also in the consumer aspect. Emma is a luxury buying consultant and accessory specialist. She consults the top multi-brand store in German, in the luxury German store. And Emma, we would like to have your opinion about how German in the high quality uh, perceive responsible sustainability and innovation at the moment. Yes, thank you very much, Orietta. Good evening. Germany, German consumers, they do differ to um, those abroad in Japan, in uh, Korea, um, quite a bit, because the German consumers, for them, it is extremely important the quality of the product that they purchase. Um, sustainability is for them key, a very high quality natural fibers. They are much more into um, silks and wools and cottons. Um, this, the sustainability issue of upcycling and recycling is of interest. It is perceived but it is not key for a, a purchase or for the consumers. They do prefer still um, these, these natural and luxurious fibers and not necessarily something that has been recycled or is non-leather 
or is vegan leather. They want the the real thing still. But um, there is a higher um, wish or a much stronger wish for um, better quality, buying less, but with a much, much higher, uh, as I said, higher quality. Um, this is key. And also what is perhaps different here in Germany, there is a lot of local um, consuming from smaller brands where they know that they are, the products are being pr produced in areas which they know, manufacturers that they know. There are uh, not so long like travels or um, the, the goods that are purchased. They don't have to fly around the world to, to you know, be in, in Germany, but they are nearby, they are produced nearby. So this is also good for the environment. It cuts costs. This is very, very important for the um, German consumers that they really know where the products are being produced, where they're coming from. They like a story behind the product, whether it's a family business or small business, a heritage business. This is very, very important. This wasn't so important five to 10 years ago. So the key items or the key message now is buying less, better quality, knowing about the product, the story behind the product, and a very good transparent quality. It is at the moment still less about, as I said, upcycling, recycling. Um, the Germans still want this luxurious feel. They like the cashmere, they like the warmth, they like this feeling of luxury. And I, uh, a, a vegan leather or a, a certain plastic or a, uh, made out of PET bottles. Uh, it isn't quite what a German consumer wants right now. Maybe in a few years, the awareness it will be stronger, but this is the step that the German consumers are going, which is, I think, already quite a, a big step, um, but not quite as far as maybe other countries, whether it's Japan or Korea or even England. Um, I'm in England or in London quite often. Um, this is different here. This is much, much, much more about the recycling, about uh, reusing products, reselling. That This isn't quite here yet in Germany. So this is my status here. Thank you. Thank you, Emma, because you was really, really clear. We got, we, I know that you jump from England to German quite often, and we can also really perceive that Germans has the word real more than <laughs> upcycle or not real. For yeah. this reason, I, w I really want to thank all of you three, and I want to invite in a physical presence. So this is a beautiful, real aspect that we have. Giusy, Giusy Bettoni, which is our, also our partner in uh, uh, predicting and dictating the rules and the journey of the material that we display in our a new point of materials. So where we have Real and unreal. We have. A, we wanted to showcase to the world this kind of fact. Juicy. Now, what do you think about this different opinion? Because we travel around the world. And I think we travel around the different, you know, meanings of sustainability. I think it's. Uh, it, it has been great to listen to each one of these, um, you know, speakers. Because it's clear there is not just one expression of responsibility. 
you know, there is the responsibility about, uh, you know, upcycling, mm -hmm. circular economy, there is uh, the, the need, uh, for example, for the territory, but there is no good or bad around it because we need to respect the different behaviors, the different, you know, kind of uh, values that, um, you know, a person or a country is looking for. What to me is really important, uh, and I think everybody has anyway touched base uh, around this, uh, is that as we did here, you know, about a new point of materials, everything starts with transparency, you know, to be able to tell a story that needs to be authentic, and I heard everybody saying it, because it doesn't matter if we talk about uh, organic, doesn't matter if we talk about recycled, doesn't matter if we talk about new generation, territory, but any kind of story need to be transparent, traceable, and also true. So it's not just me waking up in the morning and say, I'm sustainable. Okay, please let me know what does it mean. And this means that each one of, you know, the choice that the consumer or a country is doing uh, needs to be reflected. And coming back to retailers, you know, and the new language, and the new boundaries. I think that is amazing what has happened because uh, to a certain extent, uh, retailers or e-tailers, mm -hmm. you know, are directly involved with consumer. They are just talking to consumer that are looking for something uh, that needs to respond to their needs. And uh, it's very clear that the retailers, luxury retailers in particular, but not only that because we can see from uh, Yux, uh, Netaporte, to Farfetch, to Zalando, everybody of them felt the need to establish what is sustainable for them. Yeah. Because each one of them has a different way to look at the different uh, important parts of the sustainability. We cannot be 100%, we cannot touch with everything. You know, we cannot do always, you know, organic, recycled, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, heritage. You know, you need to understand which is your consumer and try to offer them what is important at their level. So we have seen that uh, each one of these retailers has defined their rules, and the rules start with transparency, by the way, because everybody wants to know today who has made their garments or their bags or their shoes, where they made it, and how. That's the base of all the conversation. And then uh, they go in details, you know. We have people that establish some rule based uh, on what their consumer wants that are pushing more the organic. You know, there, there are countries where organic is the most important thing. You know, Emma was mentioning, you know, London and UK recycling. It's everything about recycling. And other countries where progress is the most important thing. So we are talking about the new innovation you know, but it doesn't matter, I think, which is the expression, but we need to make sure that this expression can be safeguarded, can be, uh, you know, authenticated by a third party that is saying that is really recycled <laughs> and how is recycled, where is recycled, and if, you know, something, territory, who has made it and how is made it. So I have to yes. say that retailers has established rules and they are dictating rules to brands that want to stay with them in luxury, and they're based on what you said right at the beginning. Consumer, contemporary consumer is dictating. And all of them, you know, all the speakers that are related and are here with us, has just reported what is important for the consumer in that country. And it's important to have rules that, you know, are saying that these values are going to be safeguarded. Perfect. Thank you very much. I think, really, thank you also, Giusy. Uh, thank you, Alessandra, Cristiano, and Emma. And thanks to all of our uh, person that are listening to us. I think it was really great. And we also seen and predicted the future terminologies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Orietta. Thank you, Lina Pelle, for stimulating this conversation that are needed. Grazie. Danke schön. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.